Hey everyone, it's Angus here. Um, it's been a little while since I've made a video, so I thought that I would um, um, put one together just with a little tip that I've been using now for a little bit and quite like. It's um, very handy and very easy to use. So when I'm looking to see what stocks around that I might like to invest in, you know, one of the things I'll often do is I'll, you know, might be on Yahoo Finance and I'll be having a bit of a browse through. I, I quite like this, you know, very simple way of seeing you know, what's happening in the futures market. So I can say, well, you know, the market's looking a bit green at the moment. So, you know, um, today when the uh, US market opens, you know, there might be a good chance that it might be a green day on the US market. You know, or always guessing, of course, and definitely not any sort of advice, but, you know, what the futures are doing is sometimes a good indication of, you know, what the overall market might do when it potentially opens and, you know, picks a direction to run in. So it's just about getting the odds in your favour. So I do quite like looking at these little charts. But anyway, and so what I'll do is I'll say, well, you know, it might be a green day, so it could be a good opportunity to look for something to buy. And so I'll just have a bit of a look through the headlines and, you know, see if there's anything that, you know, catches my eye. And I saw this article, you know, earlier today and I thought, well, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, one of the you know, greatest investors of all time, if he's loading up on Occidental, maybe I should as well. So I thought, you know, it's, a, it's one of those things, you know, some of these articles you've really got to take with a grain of salt, but, um, you know, let's have a quick click on it and have a bit of a look. So, you know, it talks about, you know, buying all the shares that he could, you know, has a bit of an interview with him. Um, you know, he's got a lot of cash on his hands, you know, sees he finds very little excites him. But in 2022, he's been loading up on shares of integrated oil and gas giant Occidental Petroleum. Oxy is the code. And so it says in the past week, Berkshire spent over 500 million acquiring another 9.6 million shares of this company. So, you know, the Berkshire Hathaway stake is currently $8.5 billion. And so I thought, you know, wow, that's a, that's a, you know, lot that, you know, Warren's got into this. And, you know, there's obviously a lot of people who copycat trade him and, you know, will, will buy similar stocks. So, you know, you can go through and you can read the rest of the article. But, you know, I, I thought, well, Oxy could be, you know, well worth checking out. You know, if Warren Buffett's into it, then, you know, who am I to disagree? So I thought I might have a look at it. So I've loaded up the chart with Oxy. And so I might just sort of zoom in a bit on the chart, have a bit of a look at it. And so I think, well, you know, that's not too bad if I you know, take a quick look at it. You know, the RSI is telling me it's certainly in a very oversold area. Um, the MACD, you know, it's been sort of selling off, selling off, selling off, selling off. The MACD histogram is starting to turn like a lighter shade of red. Um, you know, at some stage, you know, the signal line might cross over. And so it would seem like there's possibly, you know, a good opportunity to share um, might at some stage turn around. As I said, we're, we're always guessing. We're just trying to put the odds in our favour. Um, if we sort of zoom back a bit, you know, there's nothing to see there. And so what I'll do with my drawing tool, if I put a little horizontal line across, you know, somewhere through here where there's been sort of previous support and resistance areas, you know, if I'm just looking at, you know, how many times has it touched this sort of line, you know, that looks like it's a pretty good sort of support area. And so I'd look at that and I'd say, well, at the moment, you know, the share sort of wiggles around this, you know, $56 type price. So, you know, if I change my coordinates and make it more exact, so let's just say 56 Sometimes shares will gravitate towards a you know, round number, and that's what they'll you know bounce around on. You know, it could actually be slightly lower. Arguably, it could be you know somewhere around there. Just looking at where these dips go to. So you know, it's it's broken through it. It's come back, tested. It's got up, touched it, got up, touched it, got up, touched it, got up, pulled back a little bit, rallied all the way up, and it's come back and it's touched it a couple of times. So you can see that this area you know, is fifty six, fifty five dollar type mark is, you know, probably a, a, a pretty reasonable support area for that stock. And then I'll say, well, that, that looks interesting. So let's zoom in a bit, just sort of dragging my chart around. And if I say, well, where did it used to be? You know, like, you know what's its best case scenario? You know, if it, if it does rally back and, you know, heads back up, I could say, well, you know, it's got up as high as there before, you know. So that's, you know, that's sort of its, you know, all-time high up around that $73 or, you know, recent high, that sort of $73 mark. So that's not too bad. It's also got up to this sort of mark here a couple of times, you know, so that's that's not a bad area that maybe it might sort of, you know, rally back up to there. And so all I do now is I might get my little tool and I might say, well, what is that? So if I start here at the bottom where it is now and I go up to that first line, well, that's roughly a 20% return. So, you know, that's pretty good. So I'm just sort of guessing that it might go up that far. And if not, maybe it goes up to 30%. So, you know, that's not a, not a bad return. And if I was going to put a stop loss in, well, I'd say, well, let's put a stop loss somewhere around here. You know, it hasn't gone below that for a while, you know, maybe over this, you know, green candle over here. So it's roughly about a 5% stop. So if I was to buy this, I think what I might do is put a 5% stop loss on it. 
you know, just because that's where it's sort of gone down to in the past, you know, that sort of 5% mark. And so I kind of think, well, my risk isn't too bad. You know, I've got a potential of a 20%, maybe a 30% gain, you know, maybe even if it just goes up this far, you know, it's 12% and my downside is, you know, really only 5%. So in my head, I think, well, that's, no, no that's not, that's not a bad sort of position to be in. So um, what I'll do is I'll double click just to reset my, um, scale and I start to zoom out and I say, well, that's interesting. You know, Oxy's been, you know, much higher in the past. You know, like it's had a bit of a bad run through here. It's been recovering, but you know, geez, it's been a high, as high as you know, hundred dollars. You know, that was sort of where it sat. You know, for a while, you can see that hundred dollar mark was something that wasn't unusual for this stock. So, you know, it's definitely a long way down from where it used to be. But geez, you know, if it went back up to a hundred dollars, I'd be, you know, be laughing. So anyway, so the point of that is, is that, you know, it looks like it could be an interesting area. And this is a very, very long winded way of saying, you know, I've looked at the stock. I think it looks all right. Let's zoom in a bit. Just reset my chart a bit. Uh, get rid of this line because I'll be the optimist and pretend it's going to go up to 30%. And so normally what I would then do is I'd go off and buy this stock. And I promptly forget about, you know, why did I buy it? You know, what was it that I saw that I, you know, liked the look of when I bought this stock? And so what I would normally do, or, you know, if, if I was, you know, thinking about it, I'd normally come either in a, you know, notepad or a bit of paper. i normally go and put in a bit of text that says something like, um, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, oops, Warren Buffett likes it. So, you know, let's just set this back to description. There's just, you know, things that I've got preset. And so, uh, Warren likes it. And so I might say, um, what's today's date? It's the sixth uh, month. Uh, it's um, 24th of June. I'm just going to say Warren Buffett likes it and I could say you know this is where the article is here and so I could paste that article in and so then that just gives me a way of you know sort of saving or remembering you know why I perhaps bought this stock but the problem is that now this this bit of comment is now attached to this chart so if I was to post this you know it would automatically get no, uh, it probably wouldn't get banned because it's a um, it's a third party link you know it's, it's off to the you know finance Warren Buffett um, Yahoo article, so you know, it wouldn't get banned by a moderator necessarily, but they you know wouldn't necessarily like it. But it just means that you know no matter what I do, you know that that sort of text is always there, so it's just a little bit in the road. And I might not want to share that with someone else. You know, if I share this chart on TradingView or on Twitter or Facebook, wherever, I might not necessarily want to share that with a wider audience. So what I've worked out that I can now do very quickly is there's this thing called notes. It's been here for quite a while, and I've never really decided that I had much use for it. But, you know, I've got all these stocks here on my watch list and trying to work out what the difference is, you know, what do I like about these stocks? You know, normally I leave a little note up here and I'll say something like, um, you know, I and R, you know, it's the most advanced lithium project in the US. Um, you know, so I'll go through and I'll, you know, write little notes to myself about, you know, what each stock does. But then again, it's part of that chart, you know, it's sort of embedded in that chart and, you know, sometimes gets in the way. But what I found out, if I go back to my... Um, uh, Oxy chart. What I can do is I can just click add note and I can simply go Warren Buffett likes it. And so I can go add. And so now I've all of a sudden I've got this note. You know, it's right here with the price, you know, where I look most often, you know, next to the news. And so, you know, it's easy. Like it's just a nice simple way for me now to, you know, be able to add notes and flick through it. But there's one thing that's even better. Over time, you'll often change your chart around. You know, you might move your, um, you know, you might delete your um, indicators. You might change them. You might move your drawings. You might do different things. And so you kind of lose, you know, what, what was the setup when I was first looking at this particular stock. And so the thing that's really cool, this is the bit that I really wanted to show you, is if you click on this little thing again, and you go, Warren Buffett really likes it. You can either delete it or edit it. But the thing that I can do now is I can also go add my link in. So there's nothing particularly special about this, but I can add my link. The most special thing is I've now got this little camera here. And so I can go attach a chart a snapshot. And so if I click this, what it will do is it will take a picture of this setup right when I've got it. 
And so that's now embedded to that note. And so this is just outstanding. So it means that whenever I go through now and I find a chart or I find a you know stock or a crypto coin or whatever it is that I want to buy, and I say, geez, you know, why did I buy that? You know, what what was happening? You know, what was my memory of it? What was the chart looking like when I actually bought it? I can now actually just go to this note. You know, I can delete all this stuff. You know, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Um, and I can go down to my um, note and I can literally click on it. Warren Buffett likes it. Here was the article. I can click on it. And it now, you know, depending on what you see on the screen, but it now shows a pop-up showing exact, the, the exact setup on my chart of when I bought this particular stock. So I just thought that's a really, really simple way. If you want to improve your trading over time, Keep notes of, of your setup, you know, be able to say, you know, this is when I bought it, you know, this is, you know, I should probably add a date. Oh, no, it's already got the date in here, I think. Uh, no, it doesn't have the date, but I should, oh, it says today, today, 150. So, you know, it's already got the timestamp. So that's brilliant. So I don't even have to add the date of when I was, you know, looking at this particular stock. So I just thought, you know, great, simple, simple tip. Um, you know, take note of when you buy, bought things, take, you know, a snapshot of your chart when you bought it. And it's just, you know, brilliant. So now when I'm flicking through, you know, this one here, I don't have ad notes, but I know that this is, you know, really big uh, lithium player in the US. And so, you know, again, I could look at that and I could say very quickly, you know, it looks like it's in a range. So it's sort of moving somewhere between there, potentially somewhere between there. So it's kind of at the top of that, you know, I've got one, one little movement. It's done that whole range. Um, you know, so it's at the bottom of it. So if I go like that, so that's saying it's roughly trading a 17% range. It's kind of down towards the bottom of that. So Again, if it was going to be an up market, you know, this stock has the possibility of moving, you know, 12%. Um, you know, if I was going to say put a stop loss in, you know, there's not, it doesn't look like there's a lot of downside. You know, maybe if I went down to there, somewhere around there, you know, maybe a 7 or 8% stop on it. But, you know, the short version, if, you know, I could put in a, um, a market, you know, a, a um, limit order in the pre market. And if that thing even wiggles up slightly, you know, I'll, I'll get an opportunity to buy it. So, um, again, you know, I might just do a quick snapshot and say, um, if moves up in pre-market, book to buy full stop, and then go photo and go add. And so I now know, you know, if this thing moves in the pre-market, I now know what um, to um, look for as to what was my reasoning at the time when I bought it. So super, super simple tip, very easy. Um, anyone can do it. Thoroughly encourage you to, you know, add notes to your charts or, you know, if you're especially around a purchase decision. Um, and I hope that was useful if you haven't seen it before. Thank you very much for listening as always.